Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to look at in this video is a Synology Security Advisor. So what is Synology Security Advisor? It is a package that runs on your Synology and based on best practices recommended by Synology, it tells you things that you may want to do to your NAS for best performance and best security. So we are going to go ahead and take a look at it. Here is the DS923 that we did our initial setup on um, a couple videos ago. And what we're going to do is Security Advisor is um, it's built into every Synology. It even runs on their routers. So all I did was I clicked on our start menu up here and I'm gonna click Security Advisor. Now, it's gonna ask us, which one of these do we want to kind of secure the NAS for? For home and personal use, or for work and business? Well, this one I am gonna choose work or business, and we are gonna get started. So what this is gonna do, is it's gonna run through this, um, and it's going to let us know what it finds. So you can see there's some things happening here. I don't have all of the results yet. And um, we have some kind of preliminary things happening here, right? So let's, let's look at this screen. First of all, it did a malware scan. And so far, there has been no malware found on the system. So it looks like we're done and we have warnings now. So you can see these are kind of our main categories. So there was no mal malware found. That's perfect. So we got a green check mark here. Down here, DSM and all packages are up to date. There are still settings we recommend changing. So even though there's some settings they recommend, there is a check mark there. Now, I can click on these and it will take me over to the results area for that section. So first of all, uh, malware, no malware found. That's fantastic. So now we're going to go to system. It says domain server signing is disabled. So we can click on these warnings and hit view. And it tells us the details, <clears throat> excuse me, of why we need to do it. And then it gives us the recommended action to be able to do this. So we're going to go to control panel. So I'm going to click control panel and that's going to open. And I don't want that full screen because then I can't read where it says to go. So control panel, file services, and it opened up to file services. And then we've got to go to SMB, advanced settings. And we are going to enable server signing. And you can force or do client defined. What does it want us to do? Let's see. Please note that the Active Directory domain control also needs to enable server signing. So if you have someone else who's handling your Active Directory, talk with them about this. We'll go ahead and go to client defined and we'll save that and we'll apply it. And we're going to close this. And then we have another medium severity here that says do not allow DSM to be embedded with within iframe is disabled. So let's view this. And uh, enabling this option prevents unauthorized actions from being performed via iframe. And a lot of sites don't allow you to embed them via iframes anymore. So we're going to go to security and do not allow. Uh, so we could click on uh, control panel. When you click this in here, it takes you to the main section that you need to be at. So we are going to click do not allow DSM to be embedded within iframe. We're going to click apply on that. It's going to restart the web server. We're moving through this pretty quick. You should take some time to do this on yours. And this is also where you're going to see that Synology does recommend changing our ports from 5,000 to 5,001. Now, I have a, con a conversation with people about this all the time, is that if you've got MFA and you're using strong passwords and you have the firewall on and all these things, um, 
I'm okay in certain situations running the default ports, but what that does is if they're open to the outside, it does give you a larger footprint because a lot of automated software is going to look for that 5,000, that 5,001. So there's, there's a lot of, there's some debate. That's a conversation you have to have when you get down, when you really get down to it. All right. So under account, one account security settings are not enabled. Password strength rules do not meet, meet requirements for work or business. Now, this is another thing that is hotly contested in the IT world is how often should we be changing the passwords that are the password requirements? I mean, Microsoft by default uh, has less than a year of password expiration in Active Directory. But uh, if you go out and read, they talk about having a longer password expiration if you have things like MFA, because what happens is when you make your users continually change the passwords, that's when they write them down. That's when all these things happen. So what we're going to do is we are going to include special characters. <clears throat> Excuse me, my password already has that, the lab password. My lab password meets the specifications, right? So we're going to open control panel, and it took us right over here to where we need to be. So we're going to enable special characters. We're going to hit apply, and I am not going to force all users because I'm the only user, so I'm going to skip that. All right, we are burning right through this. Now we're down to network. Okay, so here, here it is. It recommends DSM HTTP port number has not been changed from the default value. So it's talking about that 5000 and 5001, which is going to open you up to being scanned a lot more if it's open to the internet. If you're using Quick Connect or VPN, then you don't have these directly open to the internet. So this, like, like I said, this is a conversation we have to have. But what we're going to do to make Security Advisor, Advisor happy is we're going to change that. So recommended action in Control Panel, Login Portal, DSM, enter a port number other than 5,000. So we're going to click this. Boom, it takes us right there. So we're going to do 5,500 and 5501 and we're going to save this and it's going to restart the web server and you're going to see that it is going to automatically redirect us to that new port here in just a second so and this 923 i like i really do like this device it's snappy i'm not doing plex transcoding so that part doesn't really bother me um, but I think it's going to work out really well for all of the things that we're doing. I'm going to put some more memory in it uh, because we're going to do some active backup for business stuff, um, VMs and things like that. So you can see we got uh, redirected, and we are going to continue. Should go ahead and just log us right back in. So now we've we performed all of the actions that Security Advisor wanted. So we're going to go ahead and hit Scan, and we're going to let it rescan and see if it's happy now. One thing that I would like to say about Security Advisor, it does a really good job, but we can always take that security, practical security, things that aren't, you know, making everything completely inconvenient. We can still take it up a notch, right? So we're going to do another video where we're going to do some advanced things, and that's where we're going to get into certificates and the port forwarding and MFA and all those things. So you can see that it came back, and right now it's happy. It is happy, and I'm happy. Now, what? Um, it's weird that it didn't show this because uh, this is an info, not a critical, right? So email notifications for new DSM update ready are disabled. Doesn't show up here. It is happy. I'm happy. Like I said, there there's a way that we're going to take this to the next level. That's going to be the next video on this. And then uh, we'll be ready to stick this thing into a network and, and use it. The other thing that the security advisor has, you can view all of the results here. Uh, the login analysis is fantastic. So if you have this uh, available outside of your network, what happens is it kind of builds a baseline of where people log in from. And if a user logs in from a new IP address, you get an email, you get a notification saying, hey, this user logged in from a different IP. You might want to check it out. I think that's brilliant. Then under advanced, we still have this, uh, the setup for work and business. 
And then we can do a regular weekly scan. So this runs every Wednesday at 2.51 a.m. That's interesting. And then we can change the, re uh, we can store the report and go back and access it. So uh, nothing was changed. So I'm, I'm happy with this. The next video that we are going to do, like I said, we're going to take that security to the next level. So if you're interested in that, make sure you are subscribed and that you have uh, notifications so you will see that video. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, which are a great way to support the channel. Uh, and our Patreon link is down below there as well. And if you need IT consulting, head on over to willyhow.com, click hire us or contact us, fill that information out and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Once again, I'm Willie. Thanks for going over security advisor with me today and make sure you're on the lookout for the video where we're going to take the security to the next level. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.